everyone, it's Nona Grace, and I'm from Western New York. Yesterday I was so excited about stuff that Jane pointed out that I'd forgotten to say where I was from. You know, I don't remember if I did or didn't, but Jane said I, I didn't, don't. so I must be I didn't. Well, today I'm saying I'm from Western New York. And when I was reading my comments, I had a comment from Wendy, which is Hardneck Farms. Her comment brought back a memory of um, when Jim and I got together. He doesn't even know what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> I never know. I know you don't. I never know either. But I do have a few notes, so I must have known I was going to say this. Um, when we got together and we moved into our apartment, the apartment had a kitchen, living room, bedroom, and then had a small little like office or no, it could be for a baby room, which it ended up being a baby room. And it had the pantry was in the entryway. Well, when we moved there, I had exactly three storage boxes that were um, my stuff. And I had two storage boxes that were actually wedding and um, shower gifts. And then on the wall of this little closet, there was a little closet that must have been where the stairs came up into this house at one time because it was a two-family home. And the little slanted roof thing where the where we put the, where we used as storage. I had on the wall, I had a, a picture that had, it was just a, a diagram of boxes. And in the boxes it said box number one, and they were always in the same order, had whatever it had in it, and box number two had whatever it had in it, and box number three had whatever. It's too bad I didn't stay with that box system. <laughs> then it seemed like, then we bought the house, and it seemed like everybody was just throwing everything that apparently that was left behind, or they didn't want, was being sent to us. So gradually this house was getting fuller and fuller and fuller, but the comment that she made was um, had to do with um, had me thinking about the boxes, but her comment was totally different. But it was that's what it brought to my mind. Then I was thinking about what kind of you know, like when I go in my camper, how refreshing it is. Have you ever visited campers and taken little tours of campers or the mobile homes that they have? That you can walk in and it's an empty it's just empty space and you can walk around and you can you can decide if you want to buy something like that it's what they're they're up for sale but they do have tours where you can go in and walk around those are always refreshing and then it makes me think of when we went to the um oh i don't know where we were but we were looking at it was like a mission The Mumford or whatever it was called. Probably. It's uh, like a Shaker. Shaker Village. Shaker or, Village or uh, something like that. Um, and I really loved being there because when you walked in, it was big empty spaces. And they didn't have any furniture on the floor. They hung their chairs up on the wall. And so when you mopped. The shaker or Quaker. So when you mopped to the floor, all you had to do was mop the floor. You didn't have to pick anything up. And then they had their little storage area where the storage area was where they had, it was like their um, pots and pans were in there. And they had like three shelves and on each shelf they had probably two bowls and then maybe a fry pan or two couple fry pans or, you know, they had very li a little, very, very little crock for whatever they put, probably the cheese in that or something in there, or fermented food or cabbage or something. But they had very little, and I used to love going in. Then their bedrooms, they had the bedrooms where you could see the bedrooms, and all they had in there was the bed, a dresser, a chair, a rocking chair. They had one, like, quilt or something, and then they had a chair hanging on the wall. So there was really nothing in the bedrooms either. It makes me think of the convents when they show the movies with the convents, and all they have is their little bed stand and their two habits and the shakers didn't even have closets in their thing so they probably didn't have a lot of clothes either like we have a lot of clothes and um 
I was wondering what is the difference between a mission and the shaker? Well, mission, uh, the mission people focused on the craftsmanship of the wood, whereas the shakers, they focused on the functionality of the item that they had. So they were really very, very um, conscious. I don't know what the word is I was looking for. It was a <laughs> word I was looking for. But they were, they were, um, they're more frugal, I think, in a way, because they would look at the functionality of the item, not how beautiful it is, whereas the mission people would see how beautiful things were. I guess that's it. Oh, and then um, today, oh, last night I didn't sleep real well, because, why? Because I had roosters on the brain. <laughs> I have, I have, I'm planning on keeping, um, Pretty boy. Pretty boy is really pretty now. He's looking really pretty and he's got a really beautiful crow and he's very gentle with my girls. He's only worn out the hair, or the hair, the feathers in the back of their head because when they all do that, but the, their backs still have their feathers. And I'm probably going to, I'm going to see if we're going to try, we're trying to see if this one guy wants my roosters. I have seven roosters. That's far too many roosters. I don't have enough hens for all these roosters. But there's Andy, who is, um, he was Silver's little baby. And he's very frisky. He wants to, those girls are running away, and I think my egg production will go down if they're too stressed. So he's one that's going to be going. I know Jane thought that maybe I would keep Andy. I was thinking I would keep Andy too, but I don't think so. Then Dorothy's got some really pretty babies but I won't be keeping them either because they're these bantams, they say they can take care of a whole bunch of girls. The bigger the bird, the less girls they should have. So that's why they tell you that 10 is about average for whatever breed you have. 10 hens for every rooster. I would have to have, oh gosh, I'd have to have 70 <laughs> hens to accommodate all of these roosters. And so I'm hoping that the guy that Jim works with will take some of the roosters. I did call my daughter, and she has to check with the Amish, which is a really a pain in the neck. Of seeing. What you have to do is you have to ride up to the Amish because they don't have phones. You ride up there, see when they're butchering, then you come home, and then you bring the on the day that they're going to butcher, then you go back and get your butchered butchered. Um, Chickens. Chickens, or you called, whatever. I don't know if they like the word butchered. Called. Called. Yeah. The called chickens. And um, that is a lot of monkey shine. And then my sister-in-law, I called her. She was thinking she wanted a rooster, but niece. right now, or niece. Yeah, not my sister-in-law. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> my niece, if she wanted a, a rooster, and because she's got some Americanas, and she would like an Americana rooster. But mine are bantam, and she doesn't want bantam in the breed of it. So she's not going to be taking it either. And why wouldn't she want the bantams? She wants the regular. For, the, for those who don't, don't know the difference between a bantam and a regular. Oh, well, the bantams are a very tiny bird. They don't, they're not good for eating, to be honest. They're very little. It's like eating, um, what kind of bird was it? Uh, quail, quail or uh, game, Cornish game hen. That's right, the, the Cornish hens is what I was thinking of. Um, they're little. They're like if you found a crow <laughs> and had crow for dinner. <laughs> I don't think we. But they're not crows. No, they're not crows. But they're little. They're not. Um, they're not a dual purpose bird. They're just for laying eggs and. Bantams like to go broody, which Silver has shown that she really likes to go broody. And Dorothy apparently liked to go broody, but I think Dorothy's part um, Leghorn and Bantam. She's a little girl, too. But um, that's, I guess, and on the house, we got news on the house, too. <laughs> I know, we got lots of news today. Um... I got a call from the realtor, and he says, hopefully tomorrow he'll have a signature. 
and we're going to take it for way less than what I was wanting, but I just would like to get rid of it, so I agreed that we can let it go. And then um, as soon as he gets his signature, then we'll take care of the paperwork, and I hope that happens soon. And my dog, oh gosh, there's one more thing. There's no rabies clinics this year at all because of this blue booger thing. So I called the town hall to find out if they were planning one maybe later. My dog license is due by the end of July. She said that she had talked to whoever is in charge of all this and they don't plan anything for this year. So I had to call the vet and I made an appointment for, for Jake to get his rabies shot. Well, normally you pay nothing because you go to the clinic and you just get the shot. And I says, well, how much will this be? And she goes, it's going to be $57.50. I said, for a shot? And she said, well, they have to do a physical on him too. And I says, can't he just come in and get a shot? She says, no, they have to do the physical too. So it's going to cost me fifty-seven fifty to have my dog get his rabies shot that typically would be cost me nothing. And in order to get his license, I have to do this. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'll be doing that in the middle of July. So we'll be taking him to the vet. And that's my video for today. I am done. My battery has been blinking at me the whole time. And I watched it to see, make sure it's still working. It's still working. So I'll talk to you all again tomorrow. Bye-bye.